Let's bring in Chong Guo Wu, CEO of Beijing Future Innovation Center and Executive Director of the Professional Association for China's Environment. Chong Guo, welcome to the program. Let me begin with what we've seen in China. Um, to counter flooding, to be able to deal with all that water better, some Chinese cities have come up with a new initiative called Sponge Cities. What is it and how does it work? Well, thank you for having me, having me again. And uh, Sponge City uh, is a part of the natural in, uh, infrastructure uh, that's basically taking advantage of uh, the ecosystem capability, uh, like a pond, wetlands, and the parks so that will be able to absorb, restore, absorb, or use water uh, rather than channeling away, actually, uh, by using we call it like a green infrastructure, like you know, uh, concrete and the steels pipes them out somewhere else. And so Sponge City, uh, you know, the, the, from the term itself, it tells you basically, so when heavy water or rainfall is actually coming down, uh, the city itself uh, will be able to absorb more, so that will be able to dramatically reduce the impact of flooding. And so far, more than, I think, more than 250 Chinese cities already adopting that. And it proves effective in many, many ways but there are still questions on the table in terms of, you know, how much really uh, resilience this will be able to uh, enhance or add uh, in the cases of 1,000 a year uh, sort of record flooding or 5,000 a year record flooding like Hudan province experienced back in the summer. Uh, but generally speaking, I think it's proven in, even through the history in China and for more than 2,000 years, the city urban areas will be able to really use nature and we call it a natural infrastructure to help mitigate and adapt to extreme weather events, particular flooding. Understood. So is this the type of model? Um, clearly, it's working in China at the moment. Could this work in Europe, which also saw record floods this summer? I know, I think everywhere, everywhere it will work. Uh, this is a very sort of basic uh, concept there, basic saying every city, doesn't matter where it's located, you have to really work with nature, you know, really enhance nature's capability to resilient, you know, enhance your resilience uh, when particular uh, heavy precipitation happens. And it, it's everywhere. But of course, the details in terms of, it's very local specific based on what kind of nature systems or availability of the ecosystem you have, and then you work around that. In some cases, probably, you know, nature has already been right. modified and stuff like that, but you can still work around that to enhance your resilience. So do you blame climate change entirely on this problem since the main, since warmer atmosphere retains more water, or are there other factors involved here when we see such extreme weather conditions, especially when it comes to flooding? I think there is a universal consensus awareness today. Climate change is intensifying and it's further exacerbating, uh, you know, challenging our capability to adapt. And uh, uh, I don't think there's any doubt about it today. As scientists have already said that again and again, it's been proven year after year, that's definitely the reality. More importantly, I think there are two things happening. One, on one side, we need to reduce uh, emissions as, as aggressively as possible, because even today, actually, uh, we continue to emit more uh, greenhouses into atmosphere. So the concentration of the carbon actually in the atmosphere continues to increase. That means actually it's, you know, climate change will continue to deteriorate. On the other side, of course, we have to uh, take more immediate action, particularly around like in, relying on natural uh, infrastructure to enhance nature's capability and our own capability to manage and adapt to the intensified flooding challenge. All right, we'll see what they do at COP26 with all of this. Chang Guo Wu, thank you very much. Thank you.